Rick Gorman, Executive Director of the North End of the Youth Center here, and welcome back to our second YC podcast. Today, we'd like to talk about youth resiliency, and our guest is 2015 North End of a High School grad and present junior at Salem State University, Asia Valdez. Welcome, Asia, and thank you for coming on the podcast today to talk about youth resiliency. Thank you for having me, Rick. Uh, youth resiliency is a topic at the Youth Center that we've been talking about a lot with our kids in terms of how kids either have a good resiliency or have a tougher time handling issues that are coming up. And uh, last week we talked about uh, teen anxiety and we see a lot with kids that certain things come in their life and you know some of them handle it really well and other, other kids struggle. And, we're trying to obviously help kids with strategies on, on how to handle things and, and make more kids more resilient. We also have a number of kids that are just really resilient. And I asked Asia to come on today's podcast because I, I do think that Asia Valdez is one of the most resilient people that I know. Um, this year, Asia, we've had kids come. Every year we have new kids coming into town and um, different parts of the state. And this year alone, we have uh, a number of kids that have moved from Texas, Colorado, uh, and Florida, as well as some other places uh, within the state. Uh, you yourself, actually, uh, were not born in uh, North Andover. You uh, lived in Lawrence, came to North Andover as a fifth grader, a member of the Atkinson School kids back then. What was it like, first of all, coming into our community as a fifth grader? You know, it was a very difficult time for me, not only because I'm a new kid moving into a new town, but also just some factors that have to do with, you know, the way that I looked. I went to school in Lawrence where, you know, the kids looked like me. They were mostly, you know, Latino or pe kids of color. I moved to North Andover where most of my class were white kids, and I kind of struggled with that because not everybody looked like me, and it was hard for me to try to fit in when you first got there um, you probably as you alluded to very clearly that you look different and you obviously were new to the town who were some of the kids that maybe did you have kids that reached out to you right away that were welcoming I do think that North Andover was a welcoming community uh, what was that like did you reach out to any of the kids right away I mean me and myself I'm a pretty shy person and I keep to myself but I did have a lot of kids that were extremely welcoming as a new kid one person that definitely was one of my best friends and still one of my great friends is John Boudreaux some of you may know him he works at the youth center and he's very connected with the town um, you know he was just always somebody that was very nice to me always including me in things and that was really important for me and obviously John's an outstanding kid out at Sarah he's a junior at Syracuse University right now and John's worked for us since um, since his high school days and it's it's no wonder that you mentioned someone like John because he um, he clearly is a very loving caring kid reaches out um, and probably one of the reasons he's he was our summer uh, youth of the year last year our, our employee of the summer he does a great job so then you moved on to North Andover Middle School and in North Andover obviously all of our elementary schools converge into one middle school uh, middle school is a difficult time. Been doing this a long time, and it's it's clearly an awkward stage. Kids growing into their bodies, kids uh, you know f feeling themselves out a little bit in terms of who they want to be or whatever. What was middle school like for you in terms of just being at the middle school? You know, middle school was an awkward time. Like you said, it's awkward for everybody. You're trying to you know grow into your body. You're going through many different changes and. You're dealing with different friend groups. There's a lot of drama that you deal with. I mean, I kind of stayed away from the drama and stuff like that only because I had a lot going on in my home life. At that point in time, you know, my dad and my stepmom had just had a baby in sixth grade. And then seventh grade, my mom had just had a baby as well. So, you know, I'm dealing with new siblings. My mom had just gotten married. I'm dealing with a new stepdad, a different home life. And it was really hard for me to try to adjust just in that factor of my life and you know it was just a point in time where I was going through a lot of changes so it was kind of hard for me so obviously you mentioned you know your parents and your relationship with your parents and obviously a new marriage for you for your mother um, and obviously a new sibling um, who I know you love dearly we've met him he's a great kid um, you know you you go through different issues that are tough divorce is something that we deal with a lot here at the youth center 
Um, divorce is much more common than it was at one point in time. And just those issues alone, and uh, you know, clearly it only been in our community for a year at that point in time. Um, I work very closely with the middle school, and I think there's some outstanding professionals down there, caring people that really want to help kids. Who were some of your support services down at the middle school during those three years? You know, I would say the middle school as a whole is just a great place, but personally for me, I had some people like um, Miss Chesler, which is the gym teacher there, Miss Fauche, which was my guidance counselor, and Cheryl Romando, who was the assistant principal there. And, um, you know, those those three people were just people that were always there for me, always looking out for me, and just, you know, looking in the hallway like, hey, Asia, how's it going? And that was something that was really important for me. So it's just simple, three, and I think those three are outstanding people. I've worked with MB and, and Cheryl and Julie for years upon years, um, and they are very caring people. Um, but as simple as just checking in with you and asking how you're doing, that, that was really important to you? You know, just a simple how's it going was something that would make my day because it just made me feel like somebody cared. And that was something that was really, you know, kept me going. Did that help you adjust? Again, you've only been in North Andover for one or two years at that point in time. Did that help you adjust and feel like you belonged in our community? I would definitely say so because, you know, still at that point I was struggling with, you know, who I was, how I looked and things like that. But just the fact that, like, you know, these people that are, you know, in administration, teachers and stuff like that cared just to see how I was, I felt like, you know, maybe I'm not so different. So as you know, Asia, I'm a big believer in relationship building. I think that's the key to any success. Um, and I really encourage teachers and professionals that work with kids that you need to build a relationship. And uh, do you still see those people now? I do, I still do, and we still have a great relationship. And you know, they still treat me the way they did back then, and it's always with respect, and you know, they just treat me like a person that they care about. Well, I know whenever we tweet about Asia Valdez, the first person to retweet and like it is MB Chesler. So obviously she's a she's a big fan. So next year after that, we head off to North Andover High School. Uh, whole new different things when you get to high school. Uh, maybe a little different from the awkward um, as you start to mature as a middle school student. We're at high school now and invites a lot of other different issues. That was actually the toughest time for you, if I'm correct. Um, went through a lot of different issues without getting into real personal specific issues. What was those years like at North Andover High School for yourself personally? I mean, to be honest, personally, my high school years looking back were some of the toughest, darkest times of my life. And, you know, I just feel like it was a point in my life where I struggled with so many different things like you know, I was and I struggled with being in an unhealthy relationship. I struggled with, you know, getting along with my parents. I had different, you know, issues where I just I didn't even want to get up. Sometimes I just wanted to lay in bed. And, you know, it was really hard for me to, like, see the light. So as you were going through that period of time, that was actually before we knew you. Um, we got to know you in your junior and senior years. But uh, so those first couple of years that you describe as, as dark days and, um, you know, even hearing, you know, that you had a hard time even getting out of bed. Who were some of the people there or what was in place at the high school that helped you um, obviously get through some of that tough time? So, you know, I had a lot of people at the high school that were just on my side, always there for me. People include Steve Nugent, Pecan Cannon, um, the whole guidance team. I had a lot of teachers as well that were just on my side and really did help me get through everything I was going through. And besides the actual people, um, you actually were involved with some programs. I think you were involved with our girls group when you were at high school with Molly, which we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, when did you start to see that you know what, I want to get out of bed and I want to try to be successful and try to work on some of those things. You've mentioned obviously an unhealthy relationship you were involved with. Um, obviously high school kids faced with you know risky behaviors all the time. When was, not to say there was a light that came on, but what actually was it that you, you said, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna work on this? So I mean, there was just a turning point in which I just realized things were getting out of control and I knew that something had to change because like 
that was not the way my life I didn't expect my life to be like that and you know I had everybody at the middle school like I mentioned I mean at the high school sorry at um like Steve Nugent and Pete that you know would tell me like you can do this and that was something honestly that really sparked something in me because at that point I realized you know what I am gonna go to college I am gonna you know be be successful and I'm not just gonna you know lay in my bed and hope things get better because they weren't going to so in your junior year you were part of our uh, very highly acclaimed girls groups we do at the high school with uh, then our support services coordinator Molly Malandrino who you're extremely close with um, I remember her coming back to me at the youth center saying you know we need to really do more for this Asia Valdez and you know she's an amazing kid and uh, I remember when I first met you it was the summer going into your senior year you walked in um, and you had a, a little bit of an edge to you is that safe to say I would say so yes. and we we kind of developed a relationship uh, kidding around with each other you had been working I think at stop and shop at the time and we were looking to possibly hire you for working with us during your senior year and um, tell us tell us a little bit about you know what the youth center meant to you and what was the connections at the youth center uh, that actually got you keeping moving forward one step at a time you know being connected to the youth center and meeting molly i remember i thought it was weird because she just came up to me and kind of just started talking to me and i was a little bit hesitant but it was one of the best thing that's things that's ever happened to me um just because being connected here i found myself and i found different parts of myself that i'm proud of and it wasn't so much of like what's wrong anymore it was kind of just like what am i going to do next so at that point in time when I got the job here at the youth center I feel like I was very passionate and I realized you know how much I love the kids and everything like that and it kind of just sparked a whole different side of me that I never knew that I had you you were a great uh, asset in addition to our program back in this as your senior year I remember working very closely with you and you and I developed a an extremely close relationship but around the January February a lot of us who were working with you were concerned that, you know, was graduating high school and going to college a priority for you? Um, when did you kind of make that decision with a lot of pushing from a lot of us here at, as well as Steve and Pete at the high school? When did you make that final push like, I am gonna succeed by graduating North End of a high school and, uh, and try to go to college? So, I mean, I definitely didn't think I was gonna go. I was applying to some schools and my plan was honestly just to just go through the motions and hope for the best and I kind of had to have a reality check and be like no I need to get up and I need to do what I need to do and I had applied to Salem State and you know once I got in that was kind of a big change and like it kind of opened my eyes to see like wow like I did this I need to keep moving forward and see what the future holds we uh, were obviously very proud of you when you got accepted and decided to go to Salem State. Um, I think there was a, a big joy here with our staff here, and I know Pete and Steve and people at the middle school obviously shared in that too. Um, you went off to Salem State majoring in social work. Uh, you've been having a number of different positions with us. You started out as a part-time person after school and then a summer fund counselor. Last year, you took on a more assertive role as in this year, we're looking for you to be an assistant coordinator at our summer fund program. Um, how much has, has the whole working experience here empowered you to keep moving forward? So working here honestly has made me kind of more of a leader in some senses where you know back then I wouldn't even speak or say anything I'd be scared to voice my opinion after working here I've realized that you know I have an opinion and I have a voice and I'm able to you know put forth those things that I want to say and it's honestly just brought a different side of me that I think I've never seen and it's made me very comfortable in my own skin this year, you've, uh, as part of your program at Salem State, you're serving as an intern for fall semester. You served as an intern with High School Guidance under uh, Steve Nugent. Uh, this semester, you're serving under myself and Laura here at the Youth Center. Tell, uh, tell our listeners a little bit of what those internships are like and how that kind of has brought you full cycle. Full, I'm sorry, full circle. So starting with the 
high school, I had to do an, an internship for my social work class, and I thought long and hard of where I want to do it. And, you know, I connected with Steve Nugent, and he got me a really good, you know, role. And I worked with Guidance closely, and it was just really great to see behind the scenes everything that all these people do for these kids. And, you know, at one point, I was one of those kids that they were trying to help and make these intervention plans for. And without that, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today. So it was really cool to see full circle, really just I was one of the kids they were probably talking about. And here I am trying to help those kids that they're talking about now. Um, moving on to the the middle school, you know, it's just a whole different role because the kids are younger and these kids, like I see them here at the youth center. So I'm able to, you know, kind of just put myself in their shoes from when I was a sixth grader and just understand what they're going through and seeing, you know, what they're doing at the middle school as well is just really empowering too for me. You will graduate next year, next spring, 2019 from Salem State. What does the future hold for you with your social work degree? What are your, your hopes and dreams uh, after that? I mean, honestly, once I graduate, I'm planning to go straight into, you know, getting my master's. Um, I Ultimately, I do want to work at a school, in a school setting, kind of doing what I'm doing in my internships just because I feel like that's where I belong and I feel like I can help make a difference especially you know sharing my story I want people to know you know you can get through anything you are very loved by obviously our staff and our kids um, for the middle school kids who may listen to this podcast uh, our high school kids as, as important as their parents what would be some of your things you'd want them to know as far as fighting through adversity and and becoming more resilient what would be some of those things that you would want to give them a little bit of a, a message to I mean the biggest thing is never give up and I know that might sound cliche and you hear things like that all the time but you know there's people that go through things even worse than I've gone through that I couldn't even imagine and it might be hard you know at that moment to take yourself out and think you know of the light so to say at the end of the tunnel but honestly what you have to do is just think and just know that you can get through anything if you want to i'm sitting here and looking back five years ago i would not see myself sitting in this situation sitting in this chair talking about you know things that i went through i thought that that was going to be my life forever but you know i had to take i had to take control and i had to say look I want to make a change and honestly I couldn't do it by myself I had a lot of people by my side and as long as you go out and you look for these supports and you know you are open to them it's gonna be difficult at first but you do have to do it to try to get through you know these obstacles that everybody faces when you came here you talked a little bit at the Atkinson school about being Latino coming from Lawrence and looking a little bit different than other kids um, our community has changed greatly in the 30 years that I've been here. It continues to change every year. Um, we have a number of Latino and uh, people of color that actually come to the youth center who really look up to you. And in a lot of ways, you are a success story to them. Um, you've given us some ideas of what they should do. Um, you've met with these kids recently because you are coming back here to work a little bit part time for us. Um, what's the message you want to say to those kids in particular? To those kids in particular, you know, you have to take who you are and just be proud. And no matter what, no matter what anybody tells you, be proud of who you are and just be passionate on what you do and just you'll make it, I promise. Asia, you and I talk an awful lot about gratitude and making sure that you know, the lines that I use, never forget where you came from and you know, obviously appreciative of people. Um, you talk pretty eloquently about people at the Atkinson School, the middle school, the north end of a high school and the north end of a youth center. Now that you're a 21 year old young woman who's becoming very successful, what do you wanna to say to those people that have been there for you? Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, just thank you for believing in me and just thank you for everything that you guys do. I really appreciate it. Asia, thank you for coming on the podcast. You are an amazing young woman who has enriched many lives, including me. I know you are going to do great things in the future and we wish you all the best. Love you, kid. 
Thanks, Rick. Love you. Thanks for tuning in again to the YC Talk podcast. We are still looking for a podcast name. Please give us some ideas or we're going to leave it up to me and that could get a little tricky. Uh, if you have any suggestions for the name as well as future topics, uh, we got about 19 different planned podcasts over the next few months. And uh, But if you have other topics that you'd like us to, to touch on, um, email me, rgorman at nayouth.com or uh, call the Youth Center or come by and visit and see the stuff that we're going on here at the Youth Center. Again, thanks to uh, NACAM for helping us produce this podcast every week, and uh, we look forward to next week. And uh, until next week, remember, too much passion is not enough passion.